Esther, and I'm going to read for you today. My book of choice is from Roald Dahl's Revolting Rhymes. The illustrations are by Quentin Blake. Um, he's done all sorts of books like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, things like that. But today I'm going to read his Revolting Rhyme version of Cinderella. Cinderella. There she is, see, looking quite sorry for herself. I guess you think you know this story. You don't. The real one's much more gory. The phony one, the one you know, was cooked up years and years ago and made to sound all soft and sappy just to keep children happy. Mind you, they got the first bit right. Bit where, in the dead of night, the ugly sisters, jewels and all, departed for the palace ball. While darling little Cinderella was locked up in a slimy cellar, where rats who wanted things to eat began to nibble at her feet. She bellowed, help! And let me out! The magic fairy heard her shout. Appearing in a blaze of light, she said, My dear, are you all right? All right, cried Cindy. Can't you see? I feel as rotten as can be. There she is. Yep, that's the, um, the fairy coming out of nowhere. And Cindy... Any of these little creatures, they might be little mice or little rats, I don't know. Hmm. See what happens. She beat her fist against the wall and shouted, Get me to the ball! There is a disco at the palace. The rest have gone and I am jealous. I want a dress, I want a coach, and earrings and a diamond brooch. And silver slippers, two of those, and lovely nylon pantyhose. Done up like that, I'll guarantee the handsome prince will fall for me. The fairy said, hang on a tick. She gave her wand a mighty flick, and quickly, in no time at all, Cindy was at the palace ball. It made the ugly sisters wince to see her dancing with the prince. She held him very tight and pressed herself against his manly chest. The prince himself was so turned to pulp. All he could do was gasp and gulp. Then midnight struck. She shouted, Heck! I've got to run to save my neck! The prince cried, no, alas, alack. He grabbed her dress to hold her back as Cindy shouted, let me go. The dress was ripped from head to toe. She ran out in her underwear and lost one slipper on the stair. The prince was on it like a dart. He pressed it to his pounding heart. The girl, this slipper fits, he cried. Tomorrow morn shall be my bride. I'll visit every house in town until I until I have tracked the maiden down. Then, rather carelessly, I fear, he placed it on a crate of beer. At once, one of the ugly sisters, the one whose face was blotched with blisters, sneaked up and grabbed the dainty shoe and quickly flushed it down the loo. Then, in its place, she calmly put the slipper for, from her own left foot. Aha! You see, the plot grows thicker. And Cindy's look starts looking sicker. So here we have the prince. He's delighted with this little shoe that he's found. It's his way of knowing where Cindy is. Hmm. 
Next day, the prince went charging down to knock on all the doors in town. In every house the tension grew. Who was the owner of the shoe? The shoe was very long and wide. A normal foot got lost inside. Also, it smelled a wee bit icky. The owner's feet were hot and sticky. Thousands of eager people came to try it on, but all in vain. Now came the ugly sister's go. One tried it on. The prince screamed, no! But she screamed, yes, it fits, whoopee! So now you've got to marry me! The prince went white from ear to ear. He muttered, let me out of here. Oh, no, you don't. You made a vow. There's no way you can back out now. Off with her head, the prince roared back. Then he chopped it off with one big whack. This pleased the prince. He smiled and said, she's prettier without her head. Then up came sister number two who yelled, now I will try the shoe, try this instead, the prince yelled back. He swung his trusty sword and smack. Her head went crashing to the ground. It bounced a bit and rolled around. So do you wanna see the pictures of this happening? Okay. So this is one of the ugly sisters. Look at her, she's, she's, um. She's trying it on with him, and he doesn't want to marry her. But she's tried to trick him. But then he does a dastardly thing. Look, chops her head off. Look at that. This man's watching. There's a sword. The shoe falls to the ground, and her head. She didn't expect that, did she? Oh. So what's happening next? We see Cinderella's coming. She's noticed what's going on. Cinderella heard the thuds of bouncing heads upon the floor and poked her own head around the door. What's all the racket? Cindy cried. Mind your own biz, the prince replied. Poor Cindy's heart was torn to shreds. My prince, she thought, he chops off heads. How could I marry anyone who does that sort of thing for fun? The prince cried, who's this dirty slut? Off with her nut, off with her nut. Just then, all in a blaze of light, the magic fairy hove in sight, her magic wand went swoosh and swish. Cindy, she cried, come make a wish. Wish anything and have no doubt that I will make it come about. Cindy answered, oh kind fairy, this time I shall be more wary. No more princes, no more money. I'm wishing for a decent man. They're hard to find. Do you think you can? Within a minute, Cinderella was married to a lovely fella, a simple jam maker by trade, who sold good homemade marmalade. Their house was filled with smiles and laughter, and they were happy ever after. We have a little jam, jam pot that he made. So that was a story from Roald Dahl's Revolting Rhymes, illustrated by Quentin Blake. It's a very good book and it's full of lots and lots of nice fairy tales written in a revolting way. Okay, bye!